After recently going on the P&O Pacific Encounter, I thought I would share my 5 things I really liked and 5 things that I really didn't like about the Pacific Encounter and why that is. I did the same thing after coming off the Carnival Splendor. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to have a look at that video. Also, I did mention all of this in the post-cruise survey that p and Cruises sent out. So let's get into it. Let's start off with something I did like, the overall look and layout of the ship. The colours were nice, they were neutral and not overwhelming. The ship didn't look too outdated even though it's over 20 years old. Most things are easy to find and get to, except for the Dragon Lady which had to be accessed by the level 7 aft stairs or lifts as there is no way to get to it from a lower level. There was one thing that was bad about the ship though. The first thing that was bad about the ship was the smell of the sewerage in some parts of the ship. The most noticeable place was Deck 7 between the Encounter Hotel and the Ocean Bar. The smell wasn't just a one-off for our cruise either, if you check out numerous Facebook groups they will tell you the same thing. Hopefully they will have or fix it soon. My next like is the number of pools that the ship has, with 5 in total. They are located on Deck 14 at the Oasis, the Family Pool just ahead of the Pantry, then just past New Zealand Natural Ice Cream near the Pool Bar. There is another on Deck 17 at the Sunset Bar, and if you have Byron Bay access, one more on Deck 15. No doubt on hot days when the ship is full, the pools will start to be filled up, but it's still nice to know there are many options. Onto the second dislike, the pantry is small and seemed to be lacking in variety. The pantry, as Pino calls it, is a food court style buffet. Offer things like curries, fish and chips, cakes and other things. Each station offered a variety of things and would change each day. It is then mirrored on the opposite side. Everything here is included in your fare. As for why I think it is small, I'll use the Carnival Splendor as an example. The buffet on the ship goes over four sections of the ship. The first is probably the same size as the pantry on the encounter. The second would then take over the section of the family pool on the encounter. Although the seafood shack on that ship isn't included on your fare. The third section is above that on deck 10 called the old fashioned barbecue. Then to finish it, you have the Masala Tiger and Carnival Deli just outside the Serenity adults only area. There is a huge difference in size and definitely has more options than the encounter. My next good thing was the food in the restaurants tasted great. While some items that I would rate higher than others, nothing was horrible by any means. The food was great, and the concept of rotating three different restaurants if you had a set dining time was a great idea. Just FYI, I didn't try any of the specialty restaurants on that sailing. My next dislike is paying for poolside pizza. On p and when we went on, the pizzas were made in conjunction with Melbourne chef Johnny D. Francesco. What disappointed me was, after going on the Carnival Splendor a few months before, the pizza was included in your fare, and you get as much as you want, provided you are willing to wait for it to be made. The same goes for many other cruise lines including Royal Caribbean who have even come out publicly saying they won't be charging for pizza anytime soon. If you pay on a p and you would imagine that the pizza would taste much better, but honestly I didn't think it tasted that much different. The only difference being was that the base was a bit thicker on the encounter. It doesn't matter to me that a celebrity chef was involved, it just seems like they were trying to get money out of you for something that the competition is giving for free and tasted exactly the same. Before we continue, when I was preparing this video, p and announced that they were changing 400 Grande and Grande Pronto and replacing with p and Will this make a difference? I guess I'll just have to go on another p and cruise to find out. My next good thing was that I found the shows on board to be good. While not Broadway quality, everything from 1 to 7 and everything else was enjoyable. If you do enjoy shows with adult themes, I recommend Blanc de Blanc for an extra fee. My next bad thing is a continuation of my last point, and there definitely seemed to be something lacking in the entertainment at night. The ship on most nights would have a 7pm show, and after that, if it wasn't a theme night, your options were either karaoke, find a bar, gamble in the casino, or rewatch the show at 9pm, or wait until 10 or 11 at night when the nightclub opened. Also, on one of the nights, instead of any other stage shows or performances in the main theatre, they just showed the movie Wakanda Forever. This wasn't a horrible idea by any means, but the movie was also being shown in the cabins as well. It's like they needed something to show on that day, but they had nothing else. My last good point is that the staff are fantastic. I could not fault any of them. From remembering your name to your favourite drinks, they were perfect. They are an asset to the company. My last disappointment was the lack of anything happening on the deck at night. While we did go in June, which is still in winter, where we went Papua New Guinea the nights are still very, very, very warm. What made this also more disappointing was that in previous times I've been on P&O ships, 
was that they did have things on deck. One of those being that they would show the movie The Great Gatsby on Gatsby Night, but on this cruise it was nowhere to be seen. Most nights they could have at least had a movie on the big screen, depending on the weather, but there wasn't anything. No deck parties, no movies, it was dead up there. So what would I rate the Pacific Encounter overall? For the cruise that I went on, on June 7th, to Papua New Guinea, I would give the ship 2.5 out of 5. I found the ship to be lacking in entertainment at night if there wasn't a show in the main theatre. It felt like most nights after you'd watched the show in the main theatre, your only options, unless it was a theme night, was getting a drink at the bar or play in the casino. There wasn't much else to do until the nightclub opened, except for maybe karaoke. Even just having a movie or two on the big screen at night would have helped this. As for the food, it was far from horrible, but things like the pantry felt like it lacked in options compared to other ships I've been on, and paying for poolside pizza is basically unheard of on any other cruise line. It wasn't all bad though. The look of the ship, except for the sewage smell, was great. Layout made it mostly easy to get around everywhere, and it didn't look like an old ship by any means. Also, the staff were great. I honestly couldn't fault them. They're an asset to the ship and the company overall. So would I go on again? Yes but I would have to be for the right price or the right itinerary. Recently I decided to see if Pino Australia was really the budget cruise line and if it was cheaper or not compared to other cruise lines. Have a look at this video here to find out. And as always, thanks for watching.